gosh, it's good to be back. I am so glad to be back and ready. What's that? Oh, we're live? Oh my gosh. Here, let me, let me get off this coat. Take, can you take this coat from me? Thanks. Get, where, oh, oh my goodness. Ooh. Let me get in here. Hey, hey guys, I'm just back from Calvary, Canada. Calvary? No, Calgary. Oh my gosh, it's cold up there. Did you know that in Calgary, Canada, they have the prosperous soul? Oh, hey, is my hair straight? Can I get some makeup, some powder? I, what's that? I'm alone? There's no one here? Oh, oh well. I guess it's just me. I'll just have to be, uh, forgive my hair. I just got off the plane uh, last night, actually, but I just got home from Calgary, Alberta, Canada, and it is such a beautiful place. It snowed while we were there. I had such a good time. You see, actually, I like the snow. I think the snow is beautiful. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say I'd want to live in it up to my neck all the time, but it is beautiful. I mean, the city was white with snow. The river covered and freezing, and it was just awesome. It was all cool. Anyway, I flew home last night. I got in bed around, uh, what was my time? Probably 11 when I got into my bed, 11 p.m. And then I looked at my calendar for today and realized I have an 8.30 a.m. class to teach for the School of Ministry here in Reading. I'm like, oh, guess what? Out of the bed, let's get some things in order. Anyway, I did all that. Uh, just got done teaching in the School of Ministry here at Bethel Church in Reading, uh, my fun favorite church that I'm part of. And then I closed that out, said goodbye to some students and rush over here and uh, jump in with my prosperous soul community. Yeah, thanks for those, those hearts and smiles. You know, I really appreciate you guys. I love that, we've, that you're here, that I get to speak into this community and just share some things. And today, uh, I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about Calgary and what happened up there in Canada. And, uh, and I'll tell you some ideas I had about the shopping um, project that many of us are part of right now uh, and in anticipation of our Christmas coming up this year. Yeah. So before I talk about that, let me just say, I want to give a shout out to my new friends up in Calgary and I understand we had five different churches represented in this conference. We had around 300 people and uh, it was a ton of fun. I took no video this time completely by accident. It slipped my mind. It was a crazy busy day. We did a prosperous soul conference and we did that from nine in the morning until nine at night. So I was on my feet working from literally about 9.30 until about 9.30 that night, about 12 hours. I was beat, man. And uh, you know what, though? It doesn't, I, I'm not complaining. I love it. You know, it feels like when you, when you operate inside of your um, assignment, what God has assigned you to do, I think is how you touch the perpetual motion machine. I just love it. I feel like every moment I am just having fun. Now I will say some of the times aren't that fun, but you feel fulfilled. It's a great time. So that's what I did. All of these people came together and we just walked through lies and truth compared to what we believe sometimes, how it doesn't align with the, with the Bible and what God is saying and how we would recognize those and pull out the lies like weeds and put in the truth of the gospel of peace right in our hearts and just let that thing bear fruit in our lives. Man, it was good. We had, we had probably hundreds of lies pulled out like weeds and I captured those. I bagged them up. I still have it in my pickup. A bag of lies written on little, little post-it notes. People saying, this is what God showed me. They wrote them all down and we, we did an exercise and pull out the lies and put in the truth that God said, and then I promised them to bag up these lies and carry them out of the area. I don't want those lies staying in the community where they have 
uh, done this heavy work with the Holy Spirit. So I bag them up, I bring them home, and I burn them in my firebox or my, uh, my little wood stove. But I burn those things up outside of the area. I think it's important to burn them and I think it's important to take them away. So that's what we did. We had a ton of fun with that. And then we just walked through the rest of the prosperous soul material. We had tokens. We had our paperclip tokens and our stone and our foil for mammon. We talked about poverty systems and mammon systems. Man, it was a, it was a ton of fun. So that's what we did up in Calgary. And we closed the night out with some secrets about how to hear from God and inquire of the Lord, how to how to sit in his presence and collapse the orphan gap. Yeah, we touched it all. So hello, Canada, and a special um, appreciation to the pastor and his wife, Craig and Stephanie Hill at Imagine Church. And also a special thank you to Chris and Kathy Stefan. They are my financial sozo regional directors up in Canada and uh, they were there as well. It was a delight to see you guys and hug your necks and meet your beautiful children. Anyway, that's my report on Calgary. And now I wanna hop into some ideas. Now, when we talk about ideas, financial ideas, there's so much you can find on the internet. And I'm sure that all of those lists are very helpful at differing levels, of course. But I was just thinking in my own just off the cuff, what are some ideas that I have around this Christmas shopping thing in the context of a prosperous soul and in the, in the context and in the momentum of some of the things we have been talking about here as a community for over a year now. And uh, here's what I think. I think Christmas comes down to a, a heart motivation to just celebrate life, family, our, our, our plans and dreams, what's behind us, what's before us. We share, we love one another, we share gifts back and forth, and that is so beautiful. It's such a beautiful tradition. And I understand if we historically look back, there's some things under the rocks around, uh, you know, worshiping old, old trees and druids and all sorts of weird stuff back in there. I don't know about that. I... I recognize there's probably some of that there. But I would say this, I just love my, my friends and my family and I love to take this opportunity to share gifts with them and receive back gifts as we love on one another. So I'm not gonna step into the, the drama of the history and roots of Christmas if there's nasty stuff back there. Father, we redeem it in Jesus' name and wash it under the blood of Christ. Let it be a holy season where we celebrate the birth of the one who came to save our souls, right? Let's not take Christ out of Christmas. Let's not take the nativity away from the power of this season. Let's plant that right in the middle of this and think about the exchange of a gift from our God in heaven to us as a Savior and the love that must have taken. Imagine the the uh, ferocious, uh, just the ferocity in, in courage to, for both son and father to give this event that we now celebrate as Christmas. That's what that, this holiday means to me. Now, I was thinking, this demonstrates in my life, in my thinking, and maybe in yours, I'm buying gifts, I'm buying material, uh, excuse me, meals. I'm buying groceries for big meals we cook. I'm buying clothing. You know, I want to look nice. My wife wants to get a new dress or whatever. And it looks like sometimes some major purchases. We'll go out and buy. I just bought one of these things. Oh, I shouldn't hold it up to endorse, but I won't tell you what it is, but it's some kind of a mobile device. And my, actually my wife bought it for me for Christmas and gave it to me early. And you know, I, I, I'm so super excited. It's a tool I needed, but it, it I used the season to push myself out and, okay, I'm going to go get this thing I need. My old one's all broken up and let's get it replaced. So all of this is going on and I think about how this is costing me money. We, we plan for it. We, we have an expectation and a small capacity to buy gifts, so we're not going beyond that. But I just wanted to throw out some ideas that are 
kind of in the De Silva brain in Donna and Steven's thinking when we're doing this season and maybe something there is a help for you. I think this, I think that when you use cash for transactions, you will spend less and be more careful than when you use a credit card. Now, Steve and Donna are not anti-credit cards. I think that they are dangerous if you don't know how to use them. But we do know how to use them. We've mastered them. We carry zero debt. Every balance, every month has always come to zero. But I just want you to know that when you use cash as opposed to credit card purchasing, you will tend to spend about 40% less because we really understand the value of cash. When cash is in your hand, when you have a $10 bill in your hand or a hundred or 500, you, when you surrender that, there's a real clear psychology between this exchange. It took me time to earn this. Here it is. And now I have this thing. That thing now represents a transfer of value or a conversion of value from time through dollars and now into the thing that I bought, whatever that might be. So here's an idea. Maybe use cash when you're out shopping. It will probably help increase your sense of value for what you're doing and decrease the overall amount that you spend. Secondly, I would say shop with intentional lists. In other words, don't just go out and say, today I have a day open or some hours free and I'm just going to wander through stores, which is fun. I'm just going to walk around and look around with the intention of buying. Now it's okay to go with the intention, but it's helpful to bring a list when you go. I need these four things. And as you shop, you find that and you get it. Whether you go online and shop through, you know, some of the, some of the stores that are virtual now, or you literally go to a store in town and buy an item. Use a list. My son says he calls that bachelor shopping as opposed to just mommy shopping. Now this is no slam on my beautiful wife, but once upon a time, my wife and my youngest son went shopping together. And before they left, my son turned to my wife and said, mom, make a list because I'm going bachelor shopping if I come. That means we know what we're gonna buy. We're gonna go straight to the one store and buy it. And then we're gonna get out of there before we go shop and buy a bunch of more stuff. And Donna laughed and she says, okay, so she made her list. They went out in the store. This is a true story. In the store, mom, mom, I call Donna mom because she's mom and I'm dad in our home. So mom is, you know, putting the things from her list in the cart. And then she goes, oh, look at this. And she grabs something and puts it in. And my son stops her and says, mom, that's not bachelor shopping. And she he put it back. She laughed out loud. They finished the list. They bought it and got home in short time. Bot was on the list and probably saved a bunch of money. Anyway, that's a fun inside story from the De Silva family back in time. Of course, my son is now grown and married and is a beautiful, beautiful little family uh, plan on his own. No children yet. Pray for me. I'm praying for grandbabies soon. But that's the second item. The third one I thought of is pre-plan your limits. Know what is the amount you have to spend in a Christmas season or any kind of plan where you're going to go spend. For example, how much are you going to spend in total? How much are you thinking per person? And I realize some person rate higher than other persons, but know that amount and actually think about it with your spouse, talk back and forth, build some plans, around what is the actual amount in total and in individually that we're planning on spending on this people. Even how much am I going to borrow? You see, when Steve and Donna use our credit cards, we always come back to a zero balance, but some people don't. If you are going to be some people who don't, then just know how much you are willing to carry and get that thing paid off as quickly as you can on the credit card balance. Does that make sense? Now we don't roll like that, but 
Um, no condemnation if you do. Just don't do it without aiming. Remember, if you aim at nothing, you're sure to hit it. Okay, number four on my list is some people in your family and friends, in your circles, may not care about the gift, right? They want you. So what Steve and Donna found over time is certain people in our family, uh, parents, uncles, aunts, began to say, you know what, we don't really care about the gift. We just, we just want you. So why don't we plan a dinner together or let's come over or you come here or we'll just put some time together. And for Christmas, send us a card. We'll send you a card or just use last year's card. You don't even need to send us something. <laughs> and I thought, at first I thought, oh, that's kind of sad. But as time went on, I realized I feel the same way. I don't care about the gift. I want the time. So let's not exchange junk with people that don't value it. Find those and what it does is shorten your list and commit you to some time in their kitchen sitting around laughing around a hot pot of something that you're cooking and uh, do some family time instead of trading junk. Okay, number five, sometimes giving cash is more valuable than giving an item. Now, I, I'll admit, I hate, hate's too strong, but I'll use it. I, I just don't like to give cash because it feels cheap. But as my sons grew older and are working on their building their careers and they're starting to, I just had a boy who bought a home and he's like, he's starting to think now, actually I need some things for the home. My other son is the same. Actually, I kind of need some stuff. Cash is an interesting gift. It represents your time, and it also gives them the ability to purchase what they want. And lastly, most importantly, when you give cash, you're probably not gonna stack it up on your credit card, right? You probably have already earned it. It's in your hand. You've saved it, hopefully, through the year. Now when you share with them the cash with these certain people who would rather have the money because of they can then have decision and control over where they put it. What happens is you eliminate the accumulation of credit on your credit card because you're not using your card. Here's number, where are we? Number six, don't forget your financial goals. You see, back in earlier recordings, I had talked about building a balance sheet today. That is your assets minus your debts equals net worth. You might remember net worth is our altitude. And then I said, build yourself a target balance sheet so that we can have a target altitude. So refresh your memory on that and see where you are at. Do a little test balance sheet and see how have I done this year? Where am I at? Did, am I close to my financial goals? Don't ignore them and accidentally sabotage them to reach your goals. Sometimes we don't look and we, we just say, well, we're just gonna see what happens. You know, after months of hard work and planning, to sabotage it at the end would be unfortunate. So I'm just throwing out number six is don't lose track of your original goals see where you're at with your net net altitude with your net worth and and your debt reduction plans and all of those ideas and now's the time to kind of look ahead and see where am i going to be when it gets to the end of the year it's only a few weeks away guys so it's an exciting time and my last number seven weird comment is don't forget you're going to owe some taxes in an estimated tax payment coming up soon. Don't let that slip your mind or don't fall into the trap of denial, okay? We are gonna have to pay some taxes possibly with a fourth quarterly estimate or maybe you might end up owing on your tax return. Do a little calculation, keep that money in available. Don't just shoot it all in this wonderful excitement 
of sharing time with our loved family and friends and then be regretting it later. You know, happen to life. Don't let life happen to you. I've said that before. I say it again. And this is one way that you can happen to your life. Don't deny things you know are coming. Sometimes we do and we call those emergencies when they suddenly arise, but those aren't. Those aren't financial emergencies. Those are just things that we need to diligently manage so that when the day comes, we feel like geniuses, like we are happening to life rather than letting life happen to us. Well, I think I've talked enough. Yeah, it is. It's 20 minutes long. So let's be done. God bless you guys and God bless your prosperous soul. I'll see you next time right here. Oh, cut. Let's be done. I'm going to let you guys run. Let's see who. Hey, man, Andy, it's great to see you, buddy. Great to have you. A bunch of you were on for a while. Then you guys bailed off. I know we're a busy people. I just want you to know, hey, Maria, it's great to have you. I just love you for watching when you can. And I know that a lot of other people watch it later on when our life opens up. I appreciate you all. Just know that I love you and I pray for you as my prosperous soul community every day. I love you. Bye-bye. Hey, thanks for watching. I'm Stephen K. De Silva, and you're probably wondering, why have I never heard this information before? Well, now you can by going up into this corner and subscribing to this channel. Or you can go to this corner and watch the next video. There is tons of information I'm giving you. Go check it out and go deeper. Or better yet, go to the link below and go check out my website. I've got some free stuff on there. Go get that and go see lots of resources so you can finally master your money. Hey, I got to go record another video. I'll see you soon. Bye.